uh, hi, um, good evening. Um, yes, so, okay. so my talk is about um, how we've used Drupal to build uh, news websites. So I'm, uh, my name is Mark Kaluwag. Uh, I'm a project manager here in uh, SPH. Uh, I'm part of the team who works on uh, the news websites for SPH, namely um, Straits Times, Business Times, uh, the new paper, Berita Harian, and some other smaller sites. So all those uh, sites that I've mentioned uh, just now are all built in Drupal. Um, okay, um, maybe, maybe a more background. Um, so uh, personally, I've been uh, uh, in the, I've been building news or media websites for uh, over 13 years already, so I, I think it's already my career path. I, there's no moving away from it. Um, and then, um, yeah, and I enjoy uh, the demands of uh, news websites. It's a very, uh, I guess I could say it's a very, has a very unique demands from other uh, websites that, that are around. Um, so uh, maybe just a quick survey. Uh, other than my colleagues here, who else here uh, works in a media company? No one? Okay, good. <laughs> and then um, anyone else here who, who uses Drupal in their, uh, okay, just one other person, two, three. How about uh, WordPress? Okay, more. So um, Drupal, uh, for those who use Drupal, are you using uh, version 7 or 8? Eight? Eight. Wow, nice. So the latest version. Good. <clears throat> okay, so um, what is Drupal? So for those who are not familiar with Drupal, uh, Drupal is an open source um, content management platform or CMS, content management system. Um, it's, <clears throat> uh, it was uh, started by uh, Dres Butyert uh, as a message board in the year, from the year uh, 2000. Uh, so this was back when the internet was really start starting. Um, so it was just a message board for their university. And then from there, um, it has grown to a, uh, be used, it's currently used for a lot of different uh, uh, websites for, for different uh, functions and different uh, requirements. So yes, it's an open source CMS started by, yeah, I forgot to mention the other guy is Hans Nijdi. I'm not sure if I'm uh, pronouncing the name correctly, but yeah, that's, that's the other guy. And then, yeah, so Drupal is not just your regular CMS. There are a lot of uh, CMSs out there, like WordPress, uh, Joomla. But uh, I guess uh, Drupal, like uh, stated here, is a, it's an application development framework. So what does that mean? Um, uh, Drupal strongly encourages and, um, or actually it enforces, or it forces developers to, um, to follow a common and structured approach for, uh, in which leads towards uh, modular, uh, maintainable, interoperable code with common user interface. Uh, so what does that mean? Um, if you're going to build uh, uh, sites using Drupal, uh, you, you, or if you're going to start learning using Drupal, uh, you may come into uh, a term called a, the Drupal way. So there are uh, certain ways of doing things if you're uh, uh, if you're a PHP developer, you know OOP, you know uh, all of these different concepts. There's, as I, I would guess, uh, we could say, a different uh, approach that Drupal developers do things. And uh, yeah, if it can be, uh, for someone who's starting in uh, building sites in Drupal, uh, a lot of people say that's, uh, First, uh, norm, uh, actually, personally, my per first impression when I started working on Drupal was that it's very bloated. There are a lot of things there that I don't really need. So 
for the projects that I've used, uh, that, uh, that I've uh, done before, I opted not to use Drupal. I just use other applications or I build the CMS from scratch because it, uh, it's more, uh, uh, it's, it, it has all the, the features that I need and not the ones that I don't need. But why, <clears throat> why is Drupal popular? Why is Drupal very uh, widely used uh, in the, for, for a lot of sites are using Drupal? So, uh, so like uh, mentioned earlier, Drupal is open source. Um, yeah, so Drupal is uh, one of the few big uh, applic uh, open source applications out there. Um, it's committed to free software development. And uh, I think um, you won't see any um, Drupal flavors or distributions that will not be uh, open source. <coughs> uh, next is, and this is the big, one of the biggest thing that I love about Drupal is the community. Uh, not the minions, but the, the community. Um, <coughs> so there are over, uh, from, I'm not sure if this is correct, but from what I've read, there are over a million, uh, or there's an, yeah, a dev million developers or uh, content or site builders who are using Drupal. So these are developers, um, um, how to say, not just developers, designers, or um, even marketers, they, they, they use Drupal. Because a lot of things in Drupal doesn't really require you to know programming. Um, so, and then uh, touching again on the large community, so as a developer, if let's say you're trying to work on a, a new feature for your website, and then um, uh, the, the, the best approach is to search on the Drupal uh, forums. And uh, uh, most of the time, more, more likely than not, you'll be able to find a solution already that has been done by someone else. And uh, I guess a rule of thumb is, if it's not there, it's either you're doing something that is very new, or you should change your approach, because the, the way you're uh, the way you're trying to solve your problem is may, may not be the best way to, to solve it. Okay, and then um, next is uh, Drupal. Is uh, it has an excellent security? Uh, a lot of people may argue that this is not true, but uh, going back to the earlier uh, slide, it's because of the large community of developers is who are working on Drupal. Um, a lot of, uh, so if there's a bug or there's uh, some security um, bugs that are there, a, a lot of, uh, before it gets, um, uh, before maybe before you learn, even learned about it, someone else is already working on a patch. Um, and that's the that's how, why the the community is really a good um, um, good for Drupal. So again, and other than that, um, Drupal is also used by a lot of uh, big co companies. So uh, companies like um, uh, NBA, um, Time Warner, I believe, uh, media companies also like Al Jazeera. Um, the Economist, and even government. So one of the bigger, uh, more popular sites that they've uh, Drupal is uh, being used on is the the White House. So in even the actually for Australia, the whole government website uh, network of websites is built in Drupal. They actually have already created their own uh, distribution for government websites there. <clears throat> and then. Uh, Drupal is modular, so there are over 36,000 modules in the, out there, uh, contributed modules. These are modules that are built by uh, other people who wants to com contribute to, to Drupal. So mo modules like uh, for integrating with other systems, modules for managing uh, media. Uh, so yeah, most, if you have something like, Earlier, if there's something that you need, most likely there's already a module available out there. 
And then also there are, uh, I think, over 2,000 uh, themes. So uh, if you're starting, you may want to, or if you want to build uh, your own website and you don't have a lot of resources, this is very helpful. And then uh, aside from those, uh, Drupal also have its hook system. So this is a way of uh, how you could um, uh, improve from what are actually on the existing modules. So you can maybe um, a module manages websites. I mean, sorry, a module manages uh, videos. So you may, you may want to be able to hook into this module to, to uh, uh, add more features. And it's very useful for all Drupal developers. OK, then Drupal is very versatile. Uh, so aside from media websites, that select so like what we have uh, here for SPH, uh, there are over 585 distributions. So, so Drupal is not only used for uh, brochure websites. It's been used for uh, e-commerce. There's a Drupal commerce distribution. There are, uh, like I said earlier, there's the government distribution for, on, on Drupal. And yeah, I think there, you can think of, uh, you can build your own distribution and there are a lot of out there also. So, so yeah, so you can see the trend. Um, and then Drupal's code is very, uh, very good in, in a sense that um, it has, it's built elegantly. So as a, personally as a developer, I, I like to see my code clean. I like to see it. Um, uh, you could say a nicely done code is more like of an art. For uh, uh, that's, I think that's a good um, mantra for developers because you could do it in a lot of different ways, achieving the same goal. But there's always a, a very nice way of doing things. Um, and then it's very well documented uh, on the Drupal.org website. Each feature in Drupal is very well documented. You can, and under those documents, there are a lot of uh, thread of discussion. So you can, whatever problem you encounter, most likely someone has already been uh, working on it. And finally, uh, Drupal is mature. Uh, unlike other CMSs, there are, you may find a lot of CMSs out there that are uh, cropping up. They, they may be, they may look nice, they may have the feature that you need, that you, they may advertise that. But uh, the thing is, you're not sure if their CMSs will be supported after uh, a year, or if there is enough community who will back up, who will back the, the development of that CMS. Drupal has been, uh, the version one was developed, was released in January 15, 2001. And currently it's already, uh, on version, um, I think the latest release was version 8.2.3. This was uh, last year. And they commit to uh, releasing minor updates every six months. So for this Drupal 8 uh, version, you can expect more uh, improvements. And then, yeah, uh, re reliable performance. So. Again, going back to what I've said earlier, Drupal has never been, uh, uh, it's not a fast uh, application. So the philosophy of uh, the large code base really is what powers Drupal. So this means that, um, uh, like I said earlier, there's a lot of unnecessary uh, bloat out there. But that makes it reliable. There are a lot of uh, features out there for with, with Drupal, and uh, so what what can be done to uh, to fix that bloat uh, with Drupal as as well with other applications? We we heavily rely on caching. So, um, are you anyone familiar with caching? Okay, so. Um, for those who, uh, I like to try an experiment. For those who are not familiar, uh, maybe uh, you've read of, about this already from from uh, other websites. But um, okay, I'll give a I'll give a equation. 
So what's three thousand? Uh, so what's three million eight four hundred eighty-five two thousand two hundred fifty divided by twenty thousand two hundred thirty-five? Anyone? You can use your uh, phones. Okay. Great. One hundred fifty. So I'll repeat. What is three million four hundred eighty-five thousand two hundred fifty divided by twenty thousand two hundred thirty-five? What's the sort? What's the answer? Hundred fifty. Everyone now knows what's the answer. So basically, that's what caching is. So it only has to be done once. Then the next time that you uh, try to figure out the the result, it's already available because it's like a short-term memory. So I think that's a good uh, illustration of what caching is. Uh, that's not my. Uh, I think I saw this is originally by uh, from a WordPress conference. Um, anyway, so enough about. Drupal. So, oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, what are the demands and challenges of developing and maintaining news websites? So, this is where Drupal comes in for us here in SPH as developers. So, Drupal actually is, how to say, um, very useful for us. Um, first thing, uh, First thing is the, about multimedia storytelling. This is one of the requirements. Uh, one thing that uh, I can say about uh, editors is that they are not, uh, they know what they want, but being able to uh, communicate well with the developers, that's something that really needs to be, able, we really need to be able to uh, address. So a lot of times they have these ideas and then they, they, they will suggest solutions to you. But um, most, most probably, there are better ways to do that. So as a developer, that's our responsibility to uh, figure out what's the best way to uh, provide that solution to, the, to our users, to our editors. So, um, so basically, uh, for 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 news websites, there are they have a lot of different demands. They will need um, like for let's say one one article they want to to include uh, a gallery or a slideshow or even add uh, uh, some videos or maybe even some poll from a third party uh, service. So as developers, we need to be able to provide solutions for this. So they may say, oh, there's a plugin I've seen uh, one website has been using, but this plugin may not work well with your system. So that's, uh, you need to be able to help your uh, editors to, to do their storytelling without uh, being, uh, without being uh, someone who says no. You need to be able to provide the solution. And then, uh, Along with that, uh, you, you'll have to make sure that the, the way they, pres they create their content is uh, structured. Uh, maybe later, I'll touch up on this uh, necess necessity for the content to be structured. Um, then the next is um, another challenge is challenging the print mindset. So there, uh, if if uh, most likely they're, uh, they came from print. So they're used to having things pixel perfect. They want to make sure that an item is, let's say, two pixels away from the next item or 10 pixels away from the next block. Uh, personally, I've encountered uh, users who use a ruler in a monitor, in front of a monitor. That's, yeah, that's something. <laughs> Uh, okay, but yeah, so print mindset is it really uh, what we need in in the digital age? Um, so you need to be able to uh, embrace the the changing uh, landscape of delivering your content. 
it's not, oh, it's not what you see is what you get. Uh, your content will always have to be able to uh, adapt to wherever it is presented from. And then, uh, so yes, uh, if you can see the, the markup of the, of the, of the image there, uh, I'm sh maybe some of you have encountered this already where they use the WYSIWYG editor to, uh, to, to have the layout that they want. So they hit enter several times just to have that gap. And then they, uh, some WYSIWYG editors, if they highlight some text and then give it a color and give it a different font, font style, then you'll end up with having this type, type of uh, markup, which is still valid, but it's not the best way to, to handle things. So, so for us, what we do is uh, we try to uh, come up with um, style guides so that they just apply st uh, classes for th those specific items that they want to, to, uh, to display differently. And then there's the urgency. So uh, as a news website, uh, editors demand that their content will be, they will be able to publish their content as quick as possible, as easy as possible. And at the same time, they demand to be able to pull or remove that content. So that's uh, one, one more demand. Then, so for us, we need to be able to give them that uh, security or that uh, peace of mind. Uh, so th they should be able to, because with, with, uh, with our websites, let's say they publish a, uh, a story, it doesn't just go to the website, it goes to the apps, and uh, sometimes it also uh, sent to other uh, third-party uh, services. So we need to be able to make sure that if there is some content that they need to correct, that will, if not, they may be facing some legal problems, then that's, uh, that has to be uh, addressed. Content curation rules and overrides. Okay, so another thing that is uh, peculiar or unique to uh, building news websites is um, you, you don't just deliver content, uh, let's say your homepage or your landing pages. You can't just always say deliver, uh, display the latest story because the, for news websites, the latest may not be the most important story. So they, they should have the flexibility to, to present the content that they want and in a manner that they want so let's say uh, this article is important, but not as important as this article. So I need this article to be a little bit smaller, uh, to occupy a smaller uh, space in the, in the home page. So that is the requirement from a lot of uh, editors. So that's one thing that we're also addressing. And then, uh, like I said earlier, uh, agnostic content and shareability. So, so the, when you build uh, or when, when you, your editors create the articles, uh, they must keep in mind that this article is not only on the website. It goes to the app, it goes to um, a lot of different devices. Uh, it's not on your, only what you see, the same way as you see it on your desktop. So you can't go with, uh, let's say, you put an image and you put a caption, uh, left, person A, right, uh, assailant. And then when you publish to the app, you, don't, you lose that uh, context already. So they, they, has to, they have to keep in mind that all this have, will change. So, so I guess the, the best approach is to start mobile first with that. You, you know what's the, the, how you present your app, uh, how you present your article in its most minimal form. And then just add the features that you need for for more uh, advanced uh, displays like uh, web browsers in your uh, desktops. So uh, I'd like to give a demo of uh, uh, what we have. Uh, wait, let me see. Do we still have time? OK. Wait, I can't find <laughs> uh, 
just create one. So this is the newly uh, launched uh, TNP website. Okay, so this is uh, built in Drupal. Uh, so the layout is use, it's using a card layout. So it's very helpful for uh, the designers and uh, editors to be able to picture uh, how they want to present their content. So you'd see here um, we have several types of uh, cards, a card with um, that takes up the full width of the uh, of the page. Then we have all these different uh, layouts, images on the side, image on top, um, a, a, a card that uh, occupies a third of the page, and all of these different uh, layouts can be controlled by the editors. Um, uh, for the Drupal developers who are familiar with um, Panoply, or if you're Drupal 8 developers, uh, maybe using um, Thunder, uh, the Thunder distribution. So, no, okay. So, what that provides is a way for uh, content creators to have uh, a sort of a whistle wig in uh, managing the layout of the page. So at, here at the bottom, I have this uh, customizes page. So I can uh, move things around based on how I want, how I want them. And all of these different uh, story cards are controlled with different logics available to them. Like for this, uh, this is uh, an article that is pulled from uh, a queue, story cards by queue. So in the back end, I can create a new, let's say there's a, uh, we have a breaking, we have a news about uh, an upcoming elections. So I can create a new uh, a collection of articles for, for this uh, topic. And then I can use this collection and pull them on your uh, landing page or any of your uh, listing pages and then give each story a different layout. And then, so you, the next time you want to update that, that uh, page, you just update your queue. It, and then it just uh, reflects on your uh, landing pages. Uh, and then aside from that, you can even control the disposition of your ads, uh, video players, um, other things like, um, you can even give them uh, like building their own widgets. So for, let's say, pulling uh, Twitter timelines or Facebook posts. So like, let's say uh, this example. So you just have to set the, the, URL, the tweet URL and then uh, depending on the widget type, you may need to give the the widget ID. So these are all available in Twitter. So uh, from Drupal, we can create different systems or different uh, types of panel panes for, for that requirement. Sorry, which Drupal is again? Sorry? Which, which Drupal are you using now? This is Drupal 7, seven. Uh, the latest version of Drupal 7. And what it is? Uh, so this is using a lot of different uh, modules. <clears throat> but the, the main one is using panels. So panels has the has a sub module called IPE uh, in place editor. So that allows us to uh, to move things around on the page. And then the good thing about this is because um, with panels um, you can do that already uh, with the older version of panels. But uh, this is panels with panelizer. So um, maybe getting a more uh, technical, but um, it basically creates uh, a node type, or let's say a, a post. So the landing page is actually a post. 
that means that they can um, update, or let's say, uh, tomorrow is a special day and I want to place a, a different items on the top. Uh, previously, you'll have to do it uh, on that actual page. You, there's no way for you to do revisions or to um, schedule the updates. You have to, as soon as you do the change, make the change, it's out there for the public to see. But with this, you can uh, change landing pages, home pages, and uh, without a, uh, making a mess. So create a clone of the, the page that you want, do the changes, the necessary changes that you want to do, and then if, when, as soon as you're happy with the layout, you can either publish it directly or schedule it for publishing. Then as soon as it's published, it will replace the existing homepage. Same for other landing pages. So that's <clears throat> very useful for the editors. And then, <clears throat> so you can also do a lot of different uh, layouts. So all of this can be done with, uh, <coughs> sorry, with the uh, available panel panes. So like uh, maybe this also is using a lot of uh, help from Twitter Bootstrap. <coughs> So just like Drupal, Twitter Bootstrap is bloated. <laughs> but it's very useful, especially for uh, non-technical people. The documentation is very well written. And so if you're familiar with grid systems, this is uh, a 12 col column grid. For each block, it's occupying four grids. So on our uh, layout, they have these options. I want it to display uh, four grids for wide uh, desktop. I can modify it for different uh, breakpoints. So, and then actually we have already uh, defined all these uh, story card types are already defined in their style guide. So they can just choose. Let's say I want the card E, and then everything is updated already. Eight, all eight. so seven, seven, seven. Five, five, five. So these are defined in the style guide. So it helps the user or the editors to, to build their pages without really having to go very technical. And then yeah, there's, there are also options to add additional classes here that may be very specific to their requirement. OK. Um, with with regards to the articles, let's say let's open this one. So the same thing, um, they can modify a lot of things with the articles. They can put in uh, different PJ elements, um, different layouts, and that's very helpful for. Uh, Drupal 8 now uh, comes bundled together with CK Editor. So that's very good in the sense that it's more standardized. Uh, this is still Drupal 7, so we had to borrow a lot of concepts in Drupal 8 uh, to get the things work. But yeah, so this is how, it, how an article uh, edit form looks like for us here in uh, SPH. This is for TNP. So, so we try to also copy the same styles that are on the actual uh, story pages so that when they see it here in the WYSIWYG, they, they know already how, uh, how they will, uh, how, uh, as much as possible, as close as, or as close as possible to the actual story. Yeah, so yeah, they have a lot of options here for tagging different keywords, adding multiple images, uh, different image layouts and different attach, uh, can put more attachment, adding more um, bylines if needed, or if, because for, for uh, our articles, uh, we have a set of bylines that are, let's say, these are the editors, but sometimes there, there are um, stringers, there are contributors that are not really part of the, the, the list of uh, authors. So, they can put custom bylines for this requirement wherein they can also add additional information like um, John Doe, who uh, corresponded from Malaysia, something like that. So, so, so yeah, so this is how we 
build uh, or this is how our Drupal system works for our news websites. Uh, any other any questions? So uh, the stuff that you uh, that you're working on here right now, how does it go out to production just from from here? Do you let's say publish? It just goes out to production, or is this more like a database uh, migration? Is it happen? How does this sync between a dip? How, what's the workflow like for? for okay, uh, there are a lot of different workflows dif depending on the the need. Uh, a lot of a lot of the or print stories are created in a separate system. So uh, then in the morning, early in the morning, uh, we migrate all those XML files to our system and then create the nodes, create the articles from there, and schedule a publishing time of around maybe 6 a.m. For breaking news, they can either create the articles directly in Drupal, or they can still use the same system, uh, which will uh, then push the data to, to our Drupal system for publishing. But as soon as it's published, it's out there. So let's say, so there's just a status, publish status. We don't, uh, normally there are uh, workflows uh, for moderating, like um, uh, you want to push an article to needs review. If you have an editor that wants to review an article, we could also have that, although, uh, in practice, it's not really, I guess, not practical with, uh, with their requirements because they want to be able uh, for anyone to publish an article as quick as possible without the need for moderation. So if they really need that to remove an article, then it's, there really is, I guess it's more on their, their, from their side to make sure, regulate and make sure that the article that they publish is ready for publishing. Because there's no way, or unless they, they, require, they request us to provide that moderation um, option for them. Yes. But is uh, digital content different from the, uh, the what do you call it? The print content? Uh, <coughs> what, it can be different. Um, for, for digital content, they can provide more uh, additional data. They can provide more images or links to other uh, uh, your other sites that can add co information to their to the news. Uh, so that's mostly it. Video, especially, they can can have video on print. So, but they sometimes they put the links to the video on the print also. So what about mobile APIs? Uh, just like just full APIs kind of stuff. Is it possible from the uh, yes. Uh, so what we have, uh, we have several systems, basically. Uh, we create, uh, so from all these articles, we create several feeds. So this feed uh, will be pushed to an Elasticsearch uh, uh, engine, which powers the mobile, AP, uh, mobile apps. So uh, we try to standardize all the article fields, or sorry, the, the schema for articles, so that um, uh, it's easier to maintain all of them. So if it's article from Business Times or uh, article from ST, uh, we can handle them ideally with the same uh, approach because they, they shouldn't be very much different. So yeah, we... So isn't the direct connection any error? Direct REST APS is possible from the Drupal? Uh, we... I'm not sure what you mean by... Yes, RESTful APS kind of stuff. Nowadays we are mm. using mobiles. Yeah. To get the content from the uh, mm. site, because there is a one web page with web uh, content will go on on way, and uh, the for mobile we have to provide their own REST APIs. Mm. So is it normally there should be some um, plugins or something should be there on this kind of uh, open source app? Yeah, we we build several uh, custom modules for generating the the feeds, but then. Uh, from there, we push it to another system to host. So basically, uh, our, it's like a, uh, a duplicate of the content already. So that uh, what powers the app, let's say those, the site goes down, the app can still uh, work without uh, problems. So it's a separate system. But we push it regularly and um, update also. So what's the kind of load that you guys are getting? Uh, like. 
Okay to yes, uh, I'm not sure if it's a. <laughs> is it a ballpark figures? <laughs> yeah, we we let's say for uh, for ST, I, I can't remember really the the <laughs> traffic, but <laughs> it's in the <laughs> mill. Concurrent. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ken is working directly on ST, <laughs> so he's more informed. Yeah, so so STs are more most uh, visited sites, so all the other sites are a little less than that. Is, uh, so how, how is the infrastructure like? Is it like uh, one server low balance? Is that low balance server between, behind? Yeah, we, we have a lot of, uh, so we have uh, different la layers. So we have a caching layer. So first is we have a CDN mm -hmm. and then uh, next that are our web servers where we have the varnish. So this is what well, there's also the, the load balancer for that. So we have multiple web servers. And then finally, we have the application servers. So this is where uh, the actual Drupal is. Right. Mm. And so how many instances are you guys running? Um, <laughs> I, I, there are a lot. Uh, for for uh, ST, I, I guess <laughs> okay, there, there are a lot. Yeah. A lot, OK. Yeah. But it depends on like for, for all the other smaller sites, then maybe we just need one or yeah. But it's all hosted uh, in, in house. Uh, I, I believe for all Drupal sites, it's almost all. Almost all. Mm. Yeah. Except uh, Stomp. Okay, yeah. Oh, okay. Stomp has a different requirement also. <laughs> yeah, so that's it. What caching system you are using for this? Uh, we have several layers of cache, so we have. Uh, we cache in the CDN using Akamai. Then we have Varnish. Mm -hmm. And then there's APC for PHP, we have Memcache, and then Drupal also has its own uh, inbuilt uh, caching system. So there are a lot of cache. You have to manage a lot of caching systems. Yes. <laughs> I guess that's also <coughs> on, on your own server, on, on your own uh, Which one? Center. Yeah. yeah. We have our own data center here in SPH. Nice. Okay. Any plan you guys want to migrate to Drupal 8? Yes. Uh, it's still, uh, we're still on the plan, planning stage. A lot of the uh, modules that we rely heavily on our current sites are still not mature enough for Drupal 8. Uh, so yeah, we're, it's either we we contribute back to the community, build the modules from, from our end, or, con and, or uh, find us, figure out the solutions for, for, those, uh, for, Drupal, for the Drupal 8 version. But uh, maybe we'll start with the smaller sites first. Yeah. Where are your assets stored, like your images and all those? Are they stored along with the application layer or separate layer? The, uh, we have an NFS. Basically, it's uh, in a separate uh, system. Yeah. And then cache on CDN. And it's cache also on the CDN. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Anything? Any other questions? <laughs> okay. Cool. Yeah. So Thank yeah. You. Thank you. <laughs>